Hello everyone, Storm101 here. Today we'll be talking about a storm system that will be rolling across the central U.S. It's going to bring in major impacts, blizzard-like conditions, high winds, fire weather, and some severe weather as well. We're also going to watch for the potential for some localized flooding issues across parts of the Laurel Hollow Valley region as well. Before I get started this video, if you guys do like weather-related content, you can always subscribe to my channel. And if you do... We'll want to get notified for any uploads you can always hit the bell notification button so you never miss an upload as well so we're going to get started here with the watch warning map here and you can see it's very it's going to be very busy tomorrow across the central u.s it's been bit pretty busy over the last couple of days in the western u.s a lot of winter weather for the higher elevations uh that we've been seeing a lot of troughing out there over the last couple of days there leading to some snow and higher elevations. But really the biggest story tomorrow is going to be high wind. All these brown colors are wind advisories and high wind warnings. And you also got high wind watches up in the Great Lakes. So this storm system is going to create a lot of wind. And we mean a lot of wind. And those high warning, high wind warnings, which is in these lighter brown colors, that's where we can see wind goes anywhere from 55 to as high as 70 miles per hour. And we kind of get above 60 miles an hour to that towards that 70 mile per hour wind gusts. That's what we could consider that could cause a lot of damage, a decent amount of damage out there. So it's certainly a pretty serious situation there where you got wind gusts forecast for 70 miles per hour, even without thunderstorms. And with that severe weather risk, uh, some of those thunderstorms could create stronger wind gusts than that, which can. Um, damage winds will certainly be a concern with those as well. Even for showers as well, could create some severe weather as well. Even just showers uh, could create very strong wind gusts. So we're going to get started with the HER model here. And that low will be moving across the Central Rockies, across Utah, uh, Arizona, Nevada. Eventually getting into Wyoming and Colorado in New Mexico. You can kind of see here, here's your low pressure system right here. Pretty strong low already, 983 millibars. But what the system's going to do, it's going to rapidly deepen here. It's almost like one millibar per hour here. And it seems like the Hermos not as aggressive here with the pressure to low here. But look at this here. So this is getting into Wednesday uh, evening. You got a line of some storms that develops in western Iowa here. Thunderstorms of December, yeah, and those can create some strong to severe storms across Iowa, southeastern Minnesota, maybe getting into parts of northern Missouri and southwestern Wisconsin as well. Could see that strong to severe storm threat. We actually do have a slight risk for severe weather across parts, a good chunk of Iowa, and also includes southeastern Missouri. Really, the main threat to be damage to winds. And we could see some isolated tornadoes. I think moisture will be a limiting factor. Dew points would be in the upper 50s. There will be isolated low 60s. But I think that's going to be mainly for the southern southeastern part of Iowa. When you get a little further north, it's going to be more like mid to upper 50s. But even I would consider upper 50s still be good for some storms. But for tornadoes, that's still a question there. But either way, there will be a tornado threat. It's a low end threat. But damage winds should be your primary concern here. Even with fast showers and thunderstorms, it's going to be windy, which we'll talk about those wind gusts in a little bit. But you can see here, there could be blizzard-like conditions here. Now, you won't see a whole lot of snowfall accumulations out of this. You won't. Uh, these will be quick. It'll be a quick hit of snow. It could be heavy at times, but it'll be a quick hit of snow. It'll probably be blizzard-like conditions for maybe it'll last for maybe a couple hours or so, and then eventually it kind of gets out of there. It'll be a fast-moving, low-pressure system. But kind of look on the southern end here. You see those isobars that are very close together? That can really indicate very strong westerly winds. And you can see here, you got that really nice squall line, some showers, some storms that extend all the way down to central Oklahoma. Those could be strong to severe. And eventually they should start to weaken, especially against the overnight hours. Instability values will back off. Uh, when they kind of get into Wisconsin, Illinois, eventually get into the other side of the state of Missouri. And eventually that cold front goes down to parts of the Ohio Valley. And that's where kind of your flash threat risk kind of begins. It's right there. 
Eventually, it will stall out, and then a new low will develop on that front, which we'll check out the GFS on that in just a moment. But let's have a closer view here, and you can see here a pretty nice squall line storms here. Now, I don't think it's going to look that that smooth. I don't think it will look that smooth, but either way, I do believe there's going to be a, a line of showers and storms along that either way. But I don't think it will look that smooth. But really, your better opportunity for track activity would be these little cells up here, especially when they're not really connected to a line. There, that's where we probably see that greatest potential for maybe for isolated tornadoes up there. And I think this will be weaker ones, and I, it's not going to be long track tornadoes or anything like that. If we just experience, these will be more of a weaker variety of tornadoes. Now, kind of going back, I believe all the way back to the late '80s. There's never been a tornado in southeastern Minnesota before. Really, the entire state of Minnesota, there's never been a tornado up there before in the month of December. If we do get a tornado up there, it'll be the first one ever. At least in recorded history, it would be. Now, in Wisconsin, there's been a couple tornadoes before in uh, December, and that's a similar situation in Iowa. So, it's pretty uncommon to see tornadoes as far north, but... It has happened before, at least for Wisconsin and Iowa. It's just for Minnesota. Uh, Torios up there has never happened before, at least for re in recorded history. So that's a very interesting note there. So it could turn t into a pretty historic day up there if we do see a Torio up in southeastern Minnesota. But that limiting factor will be signing in. Now along the cold front, which is right here, or your dry line, uh, there will be a... a a little sliver here of sign end up being towards of zero. Now negative 100 and below that, it's not favorable for thunderstorm development, which will be out ahead of its line here. That's why we won't see any shower thunderstorm activity out ahead of it, because of those very strong sign end values it prevents showers and storms from developing. So we won't really see that except for along the cold front as well, which some of the forcing there. Uh, on the cold front as well, we'll definitely see that. And you can see here on the on the back side, it's low here. Uh, period to moderate to heavy snow on the back side of that system. Then again, snowfall amounts won't be, won't be very impressive here. And you can see how that cold front kind of sex will defer to the south and east. Okay, well, severe weather is not going to be the biggest problem. I would consider the biggest problem out of the system will be those high winds. So this is the herd mode of 1 p.m. tomorrow. And... The models are typically overdone when it comes to wind gusts. I've said that many times before. But even backing off just a little bit, it's still very pretty strong. It's got wind gusts of 65 to 70 miles an hour with isolated 70 plus. And this is just only in the beginning here. of 2 o'clock here, you can see how those stronger winds kind of move further to the east and northeast. As a low does continue to move on to the northeast, eventually getting to South Dakota here. At around the same time here, we're going to see fire weather issues. We'll check out the fire weather forecast from the store predictor in just a moment. But this strong low pressure system will continue to move on to the northeast. It'll be deepening at the same time. So we continue to move on for the next several hours here. Check out that corridor of some very strong wind gusts up to 85 miles an hour. That's something else here. Along that cold front there with some of those thunderstorms. Wind gusts possibly up to 65 miles an hour. Out ahead of those storms could be anywhere from 50 to 60 miles per hour. You know, here's 7 o'clock here. Pretty similar situation. Now behind that dry line, we'll be a little bit quieter with those winds. But eventually, whenever that cold front passes through, that's where you're going to experience some of the strongest wind gusts. You can certainly see there wind gusts up to 80 miles per hour. That's pretty insane. Now, I will back that off a little bit. I'll say wind gusts at the max behind the front will probably be 70 miles an hour. There may be some areas that will see isolated 70 or plus. But I think the better opportunity to see that will be those thunderstorms there. I think those people have the better opportunity to see that. And you can see here how the strong winds really take over the upper Midwest here. Widespread 40 to 55 miles an hour with isolated. 55 to 65 miles per hour in some of those places. So, it's certainly going to be a w very windy time frame for the s central and northern plains in, in the upper Midwest tomorrow. And even into tomorrow night as well. And probably into the early morning hours 
on Thursday as well. So it's certainly going to be a very windy time frame for them folks. So if you do have any Christmas decorations out there, take them down or at least have some little anchors or something like that to strap them down with, you know, so that way they don't blow away because with wind, with wind guns like this, good chance they're going to blow away or something. So be sure that they're strapped down and stuff like that. If you do not have, do not have anything like that, just take them in. So then again, wind gusts will likely be pretty strong out in those areas tomorrow. So let's check out that fire weather risk here. So we got extreme risk for fire weather, and this includes places like Garden City, Dodge City, Littleville, uh, Hayes, and also Great Bend, Kansas as well. That, that, that does extend into parts of the Oklahoma Panhandle in the far northern Texas Panhandle as well. You do have that critical risk for fire weather for parts of northeastern New Mexico, southeast of Colorado, southern Nebraska, even including a little bit more of the Texas Panhandle and northwestern Oklahoma as well. So, so be sure to not burn anything tomorrow, especially with those stronger wind gusts. It can spread very quickly. You got strong winds, dry air, and also milder temperatures. That's not a good combination. So you could we could certainly possibly see some wildfires on going to some of those areas tomorrow. And days three through eight, uh, predictably too low here for all days here. So it's very just going to be happening for one day. So be advised there that just don't burn anything if you are in those areas tomorrow. And like I was talking about with the snowfall mounts, you can see here, it's not the Hermal does show a lot of snow, but then again, it's going to be a quick hit of snow. So these uh, snowfall mounts are going to be well overdone. If you check out the National Service forecast, you can see here, maybe at best, maybe three inches at best, but it's widespread coating to two inches. And there may be some areas that could get up to the three inch mark, but then again, um, Snowfall mounts won't be very impressive uh, with this event here, especially of how fast uh, the system will be moving, plus those strong winds as well. So it'll be kind of hard to accumulate with that snow as well with those strong winds on the backside. And even though accumulations will still be low, you'll still see blizzard-like conditions, uh, moderate to heavy snow at times with the combination of strong winds. You could definitely see some blizzard conditions out there as well. So it's also something... Do have to pay attention to as well. So then again, this system is going to bring a lot of problems for the central U.S. Good news is it won't bring any impacts for the eastern U.S. So the eastern U.S. will be fine here. Until you kind of get to later this week here when that cold front starts to move further to the south and east. Eventually when it gets into the Oaha Valley, it'll stall out. You see, with, and whenever it stalls out, you're going to get these multiple rounds of showers and storms. And you could kind of see here as we kind of continue on with these multiple waves of so some showers and thunderstorms going over some of the same areas. Unfortunately, it's going over some of the areas that got hit very hard not long ago with those uh, some of those violent tornadoes that's happened in parts of the Laurel Hall Valley region and the Tennessee Valley. And eventually what's going to happen here is that a low pressure system will be developing along that front. At this point, and this is uh, Friday night to early Saturday morning, your lows in southern Indiana. Now the good news with this setup here, uh, we're not expecting any strong severe storms with this setup here. At least at this point we're not. So that's some good news there. Really the primary concern with this setup here would be that heavy rainfall threat. That would be the only thing. I would be concerned with with a setup like this which if we do check out those rainfall accumulations you can see it's got the bullseye for parts of kentucky southern indiana southern illinois and southeast of missouri it's got some areas close to four inches of rain which is quite a bit of rain there it can certainly lead to some flooding issues out there if we do check out the canadian model here not as high as the GFS ball here, but it still shows some of those higher accumulations. I think it's going to be a general one to three inches of rain. And there will be some places that could see higher than three inches of rain out there. What's concerning to me is that um, the NAM doesn't go for the entire event. And look at these rainfall totals. I mean, then again, it doesn't go for the entire event. It's already got rainfall mounts as high here. 
which is not a good sign there. So we certainly have to pay attention to that flash flood threat across these regions here. And also, it's a little bit further north as well. And I don't believe it's done here for the Zero Z run yet. No, it's not. So it'll be, it looks like with the Zero Z run, it's back to a little bit further south, just like some of the other models do suggest. So something we have to pay attention to as well. May as well check out the, uh, the GFS Ensembles. Eeks there, it's got the very similar bullseye region out there as well. So, people in Oroha Valley, a lot of rain looks to be coming for your area uh, later this week. It'll be beginning on Thursday, and it'll end on Saturday. So, it's going to be happening over a three-day period here. Now, the good news is it won't be happening one day like most of these events have been. Um, but then again, there could be a localized flash flooding threat out there as well. So, that's something we have to pay attention to as well. But... Anyways, guys, that's all for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this video, hit that like button. If you like my channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so never miss an upload. If you've got some questions about this, hit the comment section down below. I heard you guys' questions. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.